Hey, this is Travis. In the last video, we looked at what is actually happening on the back in the background when you create a Web3 wallet. It is automatically creating this private key, it derives your address, and this is your Web3 wallet. So we went into some technical details there around cryptography. Now, in this video, I want to give more of an explanation on what a blockchain network is. The blockchain network is called a, uh, people call it a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. And I want to talk about and, and show you this architecture a little bit. It's helpful though with this explanation to start with where we're at right now in Web2. If Web3 is, if blockchain is the network for Web3, let's talk about what the current internet looks like in Web2. The current internet is a client, like my computer right now, I'm on, um, I'm using Google right here, right? Is sending requests to these servers of a company. So let's say that this box represents the Google company. They've got probably thousands of different servers in there. And my computer is sending an HTTP request to the Google server. Their server is, um, it's running application code on the back end, and, and then it tells it what HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to send me to generate the front end in this browser right here, right? So I'm getting essentially front end code sent back to me, my client computer, and my browser, which I'm using Google Chrome, is um, rendering this front end code. Don't get too caught up if you're not sure about how that works. Some people will be more familiar with web apps than others, but just understand that my computer is requesting information from the server. It's sending information back to me, and this is how I can interact with the web app. Okay, now the internet is actually just in a, it's a, an amalgamation of all these different centralized companies. We got Facebook, Amazon, Twitter, Google, Instagram, Apple, all any Etsy, any of the companies, any web application that you can get access to uh, is probably this Web2 architecture here where you've got a centralized regulated company who they run servers. The servers contain the backend applications code and um, you're making requests from smartphones and computers and tablets to these servers and getting information back to access the web app. Now let's look, this is, so this is what the internet currently looks like today. This is the world of web two. Now let's look at the world of web three. See here I have centralization and then this is decentralization. So this is what a decentralized network looks like. You have clients that are running their own um, crypto wallet software, like I've been showing you MetaMask, right? So this is me right here on the blockchain network. I am running my own MetaMask crypto wallet here, and I'm connected to, into the, this peer-to-peer -peer Ethereum blockchain. It's peer-to-peer -peer because all the clients and all the validators were all on the same level. There's no one entity on in this network that owns the network. We're all connected with one another and we're sharing information between each other. Now, a really important, and these are called nodes. You'll hear them referred to as nodes on the blockchain. The most important node are validator nodes. These are the ones that are actually maintaining and updating the Ethereum blockchain or any blockchain for that matter. The clients, we send transactions to the validators and the validators process our transactions and create blocks with those transactions within them in order to update the blockchain. I don't want to go too in detail on that right now, um, but just understand that the validators are the ones that are doing the work to maintain the Ethereum blockchain. Clients are sending transactions. As we've seen in the previous videos, I've used 
decentralized applications to make a swap. And then I've also sent Ether to another wallet. Both of these are an example of my client sending a transaction to a validator. And these validators accumulate transactions. They confirm that those transactions are valid. They create blocks. They forward the transactions to other validators so that that transaction can propagate into the Ethereum network. Okay, and again, I'm not gonna go too in depth here. I'm going to go more in depth on the next video as to how that works. But right now I'm just introducing you to a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network versus a network where you have centralized servers running the, um, the software and having the database, right? So for Facebook, Facebook can delete my account. Facebook could make posts for me on my account. They have ac total access to my account and the data associated within it. On this peer-to-peer -peer network, no single node owns the network. Actually, the blockchain, we're going to see here in the next video that each of these validators has a local copy of the blockchain database. So all of them are storing a local copy of the blockchain data. So if one validator goes down, then the other validators will just continue functioning as if it were normal. If somebody targeted all of the servers in around the world for Facebook at the same time, then they could destroy Facebook. That's actually not, that's not a good example because Facebook servers are probably pretty well distributed around the globe. But um, just understand that these could be strangers on the internet, people running validator nodes to support the Ethereum network. So I'm on something called Etherscan right now where we can see the Ethereum, it's an Ethereum node tracker, and we can see a live update on the nodes or in the validators specifically that are connected to the Ethereum blockchain right now, they're running the blockchain network, right? So you can see the global distribution. Here's a percentage, most of them, 33% are in the US, but you can see that there are also some in Asia and, and other areas. And uh, yeah, these are globally distributed validators. And each one of these nodes, there's about 2000 of them have a local copy of the Ethereum blockchain. This global distribution of nodes gives the Ethereum blockchain the property of fault tolerance and resiliency. So if an entire country destroyed all of the validators on Ethereum, the network would still continue to function uninterrupted. And we actually saw this earlier in 2021, China banned all of the miners to the Bitcoin network. So there are validators on Ethereum and there are miners on Bitcoin, but they're both serving the same type of purpose just for different blockchains. China banned all of the miners on of Ethereum. So like Bitcoin lost a, a huge percentage of their nodes overnight, just like that and the Bitcoin network continued to function. So this is an example of how peer-to-peer -peer decentralized networks are fault tolerant. Now you might ask yourself, why are these validators doing this work on Ethereum? They're receiving transactions from clients, they're processing them, they're creating blocks, they're propagating blocks and transactions throughout the Ethereum network. Why are they doing this work? This is costing them electricity, it's costing them their computing resources. They can't really use their computer and do this at the same time. It's because whenever they enter this network as a validator, they are paid rewards um, in the native coin, which is Ether on Ethereum. And if you go back to the last couple of videos where I sent a transaction, I swapped on Uniswap and I sent Ether to another wallet, these cost me a small network fee. Well, this is how we pay the validators who support the network to continue doing it and to incentivize them to continue doing this work. We pay them with those network fees. This is why we require a network fee in order to use the blockchain. So that is what a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network looks like at a very high level. It is fault tolerant and resilient. As I showed you, we can actually see on this UI all the different nodes connected to Ethereum right now. 
These validators run the Ethereum network and clients send transactions to the validators for processing. And we know that each of these validators stores a local copy of the blockchain database on their computer or, or server. And in the next video, I'm going to get more in depth on what this blockchain actually looks like and the process for updating it, creating new blocks and adding it to the tip of the overall blockchain. This is how the blockchain network gets updated and people continue to use it. Thank you.